Greetings, Bob Love. Bob Love. Hey, whoa, what's those fish doing down there? We'll get to you guys. What did you do to make them do that? We'll get to them in a minute. Holy cow, look at there. The first time we've done it all day. Hanging out. Ready to go. Hanging out south of Montgomery, Alabama with longtime great friend, Mr. Ray Scott. Bob Lusk, it's always good, good to have you in. I'm so home. glad to be had here. Yeah. <laughs> Ray started BASS back in the 1960s and created the fishing industry. And uh, today we have the honor of helping him work on his leg. I got something in my eye, so bear with me now. Okay, so I'm back. Anyway, Ray, gosh, we call this Tabernacle Lake. That's right. You know why? Tell me. The church right over the it's called Tabernacle. It's 113 years old. Wow. You probably, are you one of the founding members? I'm a, I go regular because <laughs> I need it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So we've got this gorgeous lake, fertile water. Justin kind of swing around there and show the fertile water. But uh, we just got through electrofishing. I don't know. We've been on the pedal. Looks like um, almost 2,000 seconds. You can do the math. And we've collected a whole lot of fish. So, Ray, you've got some bass here that'll push close to nine or ten pounds. How yeah. in the world did you do that? It was just luck. Luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my last name is Bob Luck. That's Bob Luck. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but you've got an outstanding food chain. And folks, you know, when you're looking to manage a lake, there's a lot of things that are involved in that. And number one, it is great to be Ray Scott and have it to be your lake because, you know, you then you know you got the passion to do these things. The water's fertile, which grows the food for the food chain. Then they've got uh, bluegill, oh! <laughs> rowdy fish, lots of sunfish, lots of gizzard shad. Matter of fact, let me show you a couple things here. Justin, let's see. I'm going to show them a few fish here. Look at there. There's a red ear sunfish. There's a red ear with a little dip net. No, I don't need it. But one of the important things is to be culling bass like this. And they've been on a culling program now for five or six years. And what that does is it helps lead to bass like that right there now that's a big beast of a girl and as a matter of fact this girl has everything she needs to eat in this lake she's got a bass this size she can eat a bass that size will eat fish this size but something else that's really cool about this lake it's got all the intermediate size fish so we've got three to five pound bass you know here's one that's probably around six or so you know, so when you've got a variety of fish like this, if I can find a gizzard shad, I'm going to show you. Oh, there we go. Now tell me that's not a perfect, perfect bait fish, perfect food for a uh, fish that's that's three to four or five pounds. Quiet on the set, please. Quiet on the set. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to take a few minutes and just explain to you how all this has come together. So take a look at this. This is going to take two hands. If I can catch it. Well, there's a pretty good copper nose bluegill right there. This lake is just teeming with these big bluegills like that. They're the backbone of the food chain. And part of the secret to these fish thriving is how much edge cover there is in this lake. Show that there, Justin. And when you have that much cover for little bitty bait fish to hide, you got to remember it takes about 10 pounds of bait fish for a bass to gain one pound. So to kind of tie all these together, you got to have the right, good, clean, happy water, which they have. You have to have the right structure and cover to grow the bait fish and to attract the bigger fish. And you got to have the different species. Gizzard shad here. They've got threadfin shad, bluegill, red ear, and then a culling program. So thanks for joining us. There's your tip and a good look back at history and a great lake in central Alabama. Check us out at pondboss.com and the Pond Boss Facebook page live every Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30 to talk about stuff you want to know.